and he never bought lunch when we went out. Either. Oh, he used one of those. Yeah, he yes. forgot his wallet. Yeah, oh, oh yeah. yeah, alligator. The bill comes in. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but this one you're going to keep because you're proud of that one, right? That was a tough one. You'd have that's, to fight her for that. That really is a very unique, cool bowl. It really is. It's cool. So raise your glass, even though he's not the best. Hey, welcome to another edition of Lanai Gossip. I'm your commissioner number five. Co-hosting again is Lonnie back from Iowa. Thank you, Lonnie, for coming down the street and saying hi. Glad to be back. It's getting cold up there. The leaves are dropping. It was time to get down here. Exactly. And I know you talked about the wood shop one time. Mm -hmm. Now there's two of them. So we got Bob here to tell us a little bit about the wood shop, which I've never been in. Me neither. And, uh, but everybody took wood shop in high school. I think. Did you take woodshop in high school? Before? I took it in junior high in seventh grade. Junior high, yeah. Correct. Now, Correct. how did you get involved in this? My neighbor across the street said, hey, why don't you join the wood shop?" And I asked him what it was about, and, you know, he pretty much told me how involved it was and what type of equipment, and he said, I'm a turner. And, of course, I didn't know what that was, yeah. and I said, what is a turner? And he said, well, you use lathes. You make bowls and things like that. And I'm like, okay, that's, yeah, that sounds good. Maybe I'll sign up. So I went to Rolling Acres. At that time, that was the only wood shop we had and signed up. And it took me approximately 15 months to get in. Oh, my goodness. And um, a waiting list? Waiting list, right. Hmm. And the reason for that, I found out later, is they only take a certain amount at a time because of the training. It's all about safety, and they train, and they don't want to pile a bunch of people in at one time. You go to you go to training, and they bring you on every single machine that they have okay. in there. Typically, eight or ten people at a time, and it's you know usually a three hour type training period. And these are scheduled training periods that you sign up for. Correct. And there's three hours. So you just go to more than one three hour, or is it just a three hours and you're done? Well, three hours and you're done for your initial training okay. to be able to go into the wood shop and do things. Now, if you want to get on a lathe, then you have to go to turning classes. And there's like three of them prior to getting on a lathe by yourself. How long are each one of those three? Uh, first one was actually question and answer. It was like a test. And then you met with somebody and spent about an hour and went over it. The other ones, you're 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 actually making spindles, and then you kind of graduate to do a bowl. Uh, I would say each one's probably uh, two and a half to three hours. Mm, that's a lot of training, and it's pretty much one on one. It you know it's it's not a graduation or anything, but you get through it, and then they let you go on your own. So I was really into the the lathe because that's all i knew at that point so i made um i made a little uh i made a ball actually this ball here this oak was my first bowl mm -hmm. and it's my favorite bowl i was able to leave bark on it which is a little difficult what i enjoy about it is you get a log and and obviously logs are all different shape you put it on and you pretty much use your imagination of how you want this bowl to look and you get the bowl gouge, the tool, mm -hmm. and you just go at it. And so that was a your, square piece. That was a log of a. That was a log. So a round. Yeah, round. Might have had a little knot in the side of it. You know, they're not perfect. And where'd and, you get that? Uh, actually, that one I found um, on the side of a road. My neighbor said he saw a bunch of logs, and I went by there and found found it. That's what I was going to yeah. ask. So, so who provides the wood for the wood shops? Are you, if as a as a member, you bring your own wood in and and do what you want, or do they have like a bulk supplier that they that they bring it in from, or how's that handled? It's both. Um, when it comes to logs, you typically get your own logs wherever. You know, mm -hmm. some people do buy them. Most people find them. Mm -hmm. Trees cut down, etc. But the actual wood, you can bring your own wood. But they have a lot of wood. They get it delivered regularly. And what's nice about it is they have what I would call like exotic woods that you wouldn't find in a Home Depot or a Lowe's. Okay. 
Um, a lot of people use walnut, you know, um, maple, um, you, you'll have zebra wood, uh, purple heart, all different kinds of woods yeah. that I've never heard of in the past. So buying it there, you know, you probably get a little bit of a break versus buying it somewhere else. Oh, so they kind of have a store there. Oh yeah. They have a big, a big room with all the different woods and, and it's all raw wood. So you have to plane it. You know, and trim it, plane it, sand it, etc. And it's all pre-priced, or how do you yeah. know? Okay, it's pre-priced. It's all pre-priced okay. on the end. So you look at the boards, you can pull them out and check them out and see if you like the look yeah. of them. So one of the things that this show is really catered towards is especially people that maybe move into the villages that want to get involved in things. How does a person who's new to the villages find your woodworking group to get involved and and know that there's two different places. Is it in the new, that newspaper that the rec centers have, or where do you find this information? We have two wood shops. One of them is in, is in Rolling Acres, and um, it's right on, it's actually called Oak Drive, but it's on Rolling Acres yeah. mm -hmm. Road. And that's been there for many years. And then most recently, two years ago, last month, they opened up the one in Brownwood, which is next to the firehouse across the street from Eisenhower. If anybody is interested, you have to go in yourself to apply. Mm -hmm. um, a member cannot get you an application and bring it to you. So you would go in and you would apply and they would give you the whole rundown and... Um, there's a $200 fee, one-time fee. I would I would call it an initiation fee. And then it's $90 a year um, annual dues. And do they conduct like a mini interview with your application, ask you what experience you have, if any? They go through any of that or not? It's very basic. On the application, they'll ask you, but it doesn't really mean a whole lot. You still have to go through the same training. Gotcha. As everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're very strict about that. Okay. If you have experience, it's helpful because then you can do more things there to help people, be a mentor, or et cetera. Uh, there's nobody, nobody at the woodshop gets paid. Okay. So it's all voluntary. So they look for people that have experience, that want to help, want to get involved. Okay. So if I go in there, there's always an employee or somebody there to either assist or help or ask questions or there's somebody monitoring? How's that work? Yes, so there's always somebody there at the front desk. Okay. The hours are Monday through Saturday, eight to four. Um, there are three monitors on duty every day, which are members like us. And uh, believe it or not, if monitors for some reason did not show up, they would not be able to open the wood shop. Like wow. they have to have monitors because because the monitors will assist you on equipment, help you. Some will help guide you if you have questions. Um, there's a maintenance team of at least one person, sometimes more, every day to fix equipment. Um, and there are people like us that are typically mentors that will walk around and help you. Or if they see you doing something wrong, they'll say, hey, could I show you something? Can I help you? Mm -hmm. Because it's all about safety. So you brought in some pieces here. Do you want, I can't tell if the camera can catch those. Do I need to hand them to him so he can explain a little well, bit fill, what they are? Well, the clock. That's pretty cool. Yeah. How long did that clock take you to make? I'm a little slow. Just, just kind of okay. show that for it, the it camera. It probably took me, you know, uh, like a week and a half just here and there. How many so, hours, though, would you say? Uh, I, I probably have. I probably have at least 10 hours in this. A watch clock that I made, and actually I saw somebody making it, and I said, I have to do that. Yeah, that's cool. And that's I thought cool. it was pretty cool. Very and unique. And every single thing on here is wood, except the clock itself and the button, which is a, a, a shell casing from a bullet um, that we got from Shooter's World. <laughs> um, this is... This is one of my favorites just because it's unique. You have to buy that there, though, right? The polyurethane, or can you bring that in? No, you bring it in. I, I buy it at Lowe's, and they have a finishing room there okay. that you can go and do your finishing. Or some people take it home, sit out on the L&I, and, and finish it at a table. What's the story on this bowl? What's that called? 
Okay, so this is a this is a piece of cedar that somebody gave me, and I want I wanted to make a different kind of bowl. Uh, I almost call this wings, mm -hmm. and um, it was a little difficult because the way it spins and you're cutting it, you have a lot of empty space because it goes in a circle. So it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. So I, somebody challenged me, actually one of my teachers, and said, why don't you make a bowl with little wings on it? This, this is what I find really cool, is the tree ring lines are in there. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that, that you can physically see that. I think that's pretty cool. And the other thing too is, what I said, I said it earlier, when you're making a bowl, you're totally using your imagination. And when you go into it that day and you think you're going to make a specific type of bowl, in a lot of cases, it comes out different. Mm -hmm. Not because you made a mistake, because you're just kind of using your imagination and you like the way it's flowing. And that's what I enjoy most about making bowls. Well, what are you using when you make these? I use a lathe. Now, they have Not your imagination. Yeah. Well, I use my imagination pretty much every day. Um, uh, there are, there are seven large lathes that, you know, where people make bowls and then they have four small lathes, mm -hmm. mini lathes, which people make bottle stoppers or pens. And, um, I got into making pens and it, it's a lot of fun and they're good gifts, you know, just to give away to people and they, they enjoy it. So two of them are wood, but you made this one at a wood shop. Tell us about that. Yeah, so it's it's epoxy, and all this, all these come. I use either scrap wood or you can buy blanks. They call them blanks. They're three quarter by three quarter by about five inches, pieces of wood mm -hmm. or epoxy, uh -huh. and um, then you make the pen from there. So you you pretty much treat the the epoxy pens. You make them the same way you do the wood, except there's an initial step at the end. Oh, okay. You wet sand these oh, okay. at, after you do everything, and of course all the the gold and the guts you you buy as a right. kit. Does it tell you how fat a pen should be? Is there some standards? Well, y there's s sort of. These are called cigar pens these two mm -hmm. and um you know I, I mean they're they're pretty fat but you can see one of them's fatter than the other and that's just the way i made it uh this is called a slimline pen so typically they're slim i've made them a lot slimmer than this and can you engrave them put names on them stuff like that yeah so we have a, a laser at the shop actually at both shops you can do names on things pens anything if you see I my, think I saw your my name, little name board there. right here. Is that your little standard? Is that yours or is that somebody else's? This is, is that my logo that my that wife designed. Oh wow! And it's in the computer at the wood shop. So I oh. ask certain people that I know, "Can you do me a favor? I have a couple of bowls. Can you put my logo on the oh, back?" Somebody that's already been through the class. The yeah. laser class. Yeah. yeah, is that a separate class? Yeah, it's okay. separate, and I haven't taken it yet. Oh. So. People put that on for me. It's not a violation, is it, to have people do that for you? No, 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 not at all. You can't do it because you. Why can't I go in there and just give someone a piece of wood and say, "Can you make me a bowl?" Well, you won't be able to get in the shop. <laughs> I could wait outside. <laughs> wait till you guys but, get out of your yeah, car. Somebody pulling you in. Know, you have a lot of friends and people you know there, and mm -hmm. they help you, and they, you know they'll put them on for you. I like to put my logo on most everything I make. Whether it's a charcuterie board, a bowl, is that cutting board functionable? Yeah, but it's not. A, it's not a true cutting board because a cutting board is all end grain. Okay, this is not end grain. So now this you would did not be know that three years ago. No, I had no idea. I had no idea. <laughs> this is more like a bread stuff. board or a uh, cheese board. Oh. Uh, is there ever time you go in there and you just can't get your work done because there's too many people in there? Not really. Okay. You will wait. You know, you will wait sometimes, but not like 30 minutes. Okay. Um, it's usually pretty good. There's probably 1,500 members between the two. Obviously, you have snowbirds involved. And then some people don't come that often. Can a, can a average villager lives down here, if they just want to tour the facility, can they get a tour or you got to know someone? No, you can get a tour, but you can't go out on the floor. They take you in 
there's certain uh taped off areas wow. and then you can go upstairs and look through the glass okay i mean they were very strict about that hmm. so to get into this wood shop <clears throat> you you can apply now and there's no weight as far as you know right as far as i know right now there's no, there's weight. no weight you you can you apply physically you go into the one of the buildings must physically go in yourself okay fill the paperwork out you you pay your two hundred dollars your ninety dollar annual fee and you're in and then they will schedule you to go for your tuesday uh training are they always on tuesday the yes, trainings at brownwood and one important thing it's not just the guys club yeah how many females are how, what percentage would you say i would probably say i would say 25 30 percent of females a there's a fair amount there are people that make dining room tables hmm. like like really nice stuff and then you get in conversation with some of these people and they never did wood before they were whatever police officers yeah. they were engineers they were doctors accountants like you know and there are some people that did wood or taught wood shop you know in school they were teachers but it's amazing to see some of the things that people make yeah. well thanks bob for joining us on the night gossip and telling us a little bit about the woodworking shops here in the villages well, again, well, I appreciate uh, you guys having me. Yeah. Oh, and again, uh, the latest Lenai Gossip, if you're watching, please subscribe. Tell your friends about Lenai Gossip. We would appreciate uh, spreading the word and, and Sub commission. Subscribe. The, subscribe. Yeah. Thanks to him, we've got the best league to play in. It's not a boast, just a toast to number five.